Hello, my name is Paul Boag, and I am the author of a book called Digital Adaptation. And I wanna share with you a few of the key themes from that book, in particular, how you are not grasping the full potential of digital, how you are not understanding quite how profound an impact it should be having on your business. So, where do we start? Well, we start with a very simple question, and that question is, what is digital? Whenever we're faced with something new, we try and fit it in with our mental model, the way that we view the world, and we take this and we try and fit it in with that view of the world. However, Every now and again, we come across something that doesn't fit our mental model, something that has to redefine what our mental model is. And I think digital is one such thing. The trouble is, we've been trying to fit it into our businesses, fit it into our business mental model, and it just doesn't fit. In the very early days, we thought it was an IT tool, didn't we? We put it in IT and they had to deal with it. But that didn't quite fit, did it? And as time went by, we realized that actually digital was much more than just an IT tool. We began to see the potential of it as a comms tool, a way of marketing and communicating with our customers. And that changed things. Suddenly, we thought perhaps we ought to move it across into comms. So that's what we did. But actually, I don't think it fits particularly well into comms either. And I think we're seeing that in a lot of organizations. That a lot of people are struggling with the fact that the website, that digital, is just being used as a comms tool when actually it's capable of a lot more. I think we are really suffering from this problem of putting the web in a box, trying to fit it neatly into the way that we work as organizations, when actually what we should be doing is letting digital change our organizations, change the way we operate. You see, the thing is, is that companies are shaped by the past when they need to be shaped by the future. Leroy Hood put it brilliantly when he said that bureaucracies are honed by the past and almost never can they deal effectively with the future. And I think most organizations are in that place, that they have been honed by the past, by the industrial economy, and they're inadequate to deal with the digital economy. The old processes of, uh, that we used in the mass market, mass media, industrial age do not work in the digital economy. What was safe ground for our businesses no longer is, and we've seen that in many sectors. We need to adapt to this new reality because the landscape has changed on us. We have seen fundamental shifts in almost every aspect of our society and our world because of digital, because of the web. It's very reminiscent in a way of the printing press or um, the um, manufacturing line or the automobile. All of these things were in essence just tools, but actually they had a much more profound impact on our society. The printing press, the car, the manufacturing line changed the world in which we live and digital is doing the same. We've already seen it start to change business. We've seen some sectors absolutely decimated by digital, by the web. Sectors such as retailing, music, TV, newspapers, all of them have been completely redefined by the web. We've seen really big organizations go into receivership because they haven't adapted to the changes the web has brought. We've seen the creation of entirely new sectors, types of businesses that couldn't have existed without digital and the web. And we've seen yet more sectors redefined because of the web. We're also ch seeing changes in the workplace as well. The way we work now ch has changed. 
We are always on, aren't we? We've always got our smartphones. We're always checking email. The lines between home and business are blurring. And that has changed not just our home lives, but our business lives as well. We're also seeing some shifts in the way we manage businesses. There are new organizations that don't have the traditional hierarchical structure that are, are taking their cues from the open source community and the collaborative working we're seeing with very flat, flat structures. So we're seeing shifts there as well. Then there's a new generation of employees coming into the marketplace people that have grown up with the web, that have certain expectations about how the workplace will operate. They want to be able to work from anywhere. They want to be able to work when they want to work and they expect not to be dictated to by their manager. The workplace has changed, but media has changed as well. We've seen the rise of citizen journalists. Anybody now can post the news and you don't have to just go to the gatekeepers of news anymore to get your news feed. You're not reliant on BBC or The Guardian or The New York Times. You can get your news from anybody, from bloggers, from people on the ground. We're getting unique perspectives on news in ways that we never did before. And these gatekeepers are falling away in all kinds of other media related areas. If you want to be a musician, you don't need a record label anymore. If you want to be an author, you don't need a publisher. Things have changed. And that has not just meant that these gatekeepers have gone. It means that anyone has got the means of production now and anyone has got the means of distribution. And that is a big shift shift that is changing society as a whole. Our social groups are becoming ever more complex. Have you noticed that? We used to be friends with our next door neighbors. Now we could just as easily be friends with someone over the other side of the world. Also, we tend to now be drawn to people with similar beliefs to our own, rather than people that live in the same ge geographical area. And that means a lot of us now exist within a filter bubble where we only ever hear from other liberals or other conservatives or other gay people or other religious people. We surround ourselves with people of a like mind. And that's changing the nature of society. And it changes how our customers behave. But it's also changing politics. Social media is transforming politics. The 2008 presidential election in America was the first one that was won and lost on the internet. The internet was crucial to the success of Obama's campaign. For the first time ever, a president has had to apologize for a website. The fiasco of healthcare.gov has forced governments to apologize for the web. The web has transformed politics. It's broken down censorship in many countries. Dictators are struggling to keep control of their populace because of social media, because of the web. We've seen um, people overthrown in the Middle East because of social media. We're also seeing people become much more issue focused. Instead of just following a party line, they're, they're coming together over particular issues like the Occupy movement and the web and digital is facilitating that. So with such profound impact of digital, with so many big changes happening in the world around us, how are we as organizations going to adapt to that? Well, I talk about this in a lot more depth in my book, but I want to mention four areas now. First of all, I want to talk about a change in our mindset. I then want to talk about strong digital leadership and a clear digital strategy before wrapping up by looking at the importance of having a program of education. So let's start with the first of those. We have to change our mindset. We have to move away from industrial thinking, from mass media thinking, from mass consumerism. The old way of thinking, the old way of doing business was all about productivity and efficiency, squeezing a little bit more money out of the customer, squeezing a little bit more productivity out of your employees. And that made sense in a mass market when you had low skilled workers 
that were unmotivated, churning out mass media, mass produced products. We had to manage these people very closely. We had to work very efficiently. We had to have standard operating procedures, processes, policies, rules and regulations to make sure we were as efficient as possible, to make sure we got things right first time. Because the, the um, cost of failure was so high. We had very carefully organized and structured projects. Projects that were planned, were executed and finished. But we don't live in that industrial mass produced economy anymore. We live in a digital economy. And that is very different. You've got highly skilled individuals, highly motivated and well paid. They probably know more than you do as your, their manager. They need to be equipped and empowered to do their jobs. We need to get out of their way because they need to move fast in the digital economy. Things progress at such an incredible rate that we need to adapt quickly to the environment. It's a much more decentralized way of working that's highly adaptive, highly innovative and highly creative. But the great thing with the digital economy is the cost of failure is low. If you put something out there that's wrong, you can change it relatively easily. And that has significant impact and huge effects on the way we work. Because we can fail fast, we can monitor, we can iterate, we can change. Today we live in an environment that is more like nurturing and growing a garden where our products and services in the past used to be like building a building that you would plan it, you would execute it, you would build it and it would be done. Today, we live in a garden that is constantly pruned, constantly changing, constantly approving. It's a different world and it requires a different type of leadership. And we do need really strong digital leaders at the moment. It's so important that we have those people in place. And I'll tell you why. It's because we need to adapt to the digital world. And we've seen this before. We've seen it when electricity first came along. Electricity was a difficult thing for many um, organization leaders to get their head around. They couldn't quite see how it integrated into their workplace. So they appointed chief electricity officers. It seems ridiculous now, doesn't it? In our modern world that we have chief electricity officers or have them because electricity is ubiquitous. But at the time we needed help making that transition and the chief electricity officers did their job well because now electricity is, is something that all of us use every day to achieve our business objectives. And we need to do exactly the same with digital. One day digital will be ubiquitous. One day every member of an organization will use digital to achieve their business objectives. But to get to that place, we need strong leadership to set a direction. We need chief digital officers, somebody embedded in our organization that um, can set a direction, that can show us where we should be going, that can be educating us about the use of digital. And if that can't be somebody permanent, then you need a mentor, somebody to draw alongside you from the outside and to advise your organization about the digital direction that they take and what digital means for your organization. Somebody with real authority to bring about change, somebody with the drive and the passion to make it happen, somebody that's willing to be a maverick, to, to challenge the standard operating procedures of the past and to bring about a new business reality. Somebody to set a new digital strategy, not a vague set of goals about digital op uh, adoption or being digital by default, but real tangible um, solutions to digital. Looking at how digital can solve business problems but also looking at how the business needs to change because of digital. And also putting together a set of guiding principles about how digital fits in with your organization, how the organization will utilize and use digital, how it will adapt 
what its principles are for using this new technology, and then a set of coherent actions, things that can be done to adapt the organization to the new digital reality. We need that kind of strong strategy, and it's so lacking in most organizations. But most of all, that strategy needs to have at the heart of it a program of education. At the moment, the web professionals we have in our organization are implementers. They're people to put up new content or to build new websites. But what we really need is educators, people that can start a program of education so that everybody is able to implement and, and, uh, and change uh, the way they operate to make better use of digital. We need people to empower the uh, members of staff across our whole organization to better understand and better utilize this new digital tool. So who's gonna do all of this? Who's gonna make it happen in your organization? Well, I think it needs to be you. I think you're the only person that can do it. The fact that you're watching this video now, the fact that you are gonna read my book, shows that you get that there needs to be change, that there is more to be done, that digital isn't being fully utilized at the moment. Who else is going to do that? You may not have the authority, you may not feel like it's your job, but who else? If not you, then who? Is it gonna be senior management? I don't think they really get it. I don't think they realize that there's a problem to be solved. I don't think they know they can't carry on with business as usual. But you do, and so you need to bring about that change. And that's what I wanna leave you with. I wanna encourage you to stand up and be that maverick, to challenge the status quo in the way things have always been done. And if you need help, Get my book, there's loads of practical advice about what needs to be done in your organization and how you can make that happen, even if you feel you don't have the authority to do it.